Hi everyone, my name's Helen Robinson and I am proving to myself that I'm the world's worst filmmaker and I hope this all makes sense. Uh, look, this is just such a, an important cause that I wanted to try and, and get something um, out there for you. Anyway, my, my next journey is different to everybody's. Well, I think everybody's journey is different, but mine is particularly different because I had no symptoms. Mine started with a pain in my right side that ended in excruciating agony and it ended me going up and getting a CT scan at Toowoomba and it showed a tumour. Next thing I know, I was get being prepped for surgery and it was a six-hour surgery to re remove the, the tumour that was the size of my palm and it had um, been there for a long time, doctors suspect, and what had happened was that it had also thrown mets to my liver and other places in my body. Um, the the bowel resection operation commenced around seven and lasted, as I said, over six hours. And and as I said, when when I look over the past five years, there were no real symptoms that come to mind that I can say, well, I had flushing or I had asthma or. I guess it, that's why it's all such a big shock. It was such a big shock to me when it happened. What I found when I had the surgery was that no one would really talk to me about what was going on. They said that they suspected neuroendocrinal tumours, but they couldn't be sure. Um, and my whole 11 days in hospital was fairly vague with was fairly light on with information about what was going on. I remember a well-meaning cancer nurse coming in and, and saying to me, oh, how do you feel? Um, and I think I sort of said back to her, how, how am I supposed to feel with a cancer diagnosis? And and she just sort of gave me this look. <laughs> um, so after being sent home with brochures on what they thought was bowel cancer, um, my healing period began. I was with my husband and my dogs and that was the most important thing to me and that's where the real healing process started. Two weeks or there, thereabouts, the registrar rang me and said that it had been confirmed that I had a neuroendocrinal tumour on my appendix. I've got to tell you, no idea whatsoever. It was all a big shock to me. Um, I think I was relieved that it wasn't bowel cancer. Um, it, it, it was just... The, the 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 next two months were just tests, um, echocardiograms, urine tests, blood tests, scans, CT scans, PET scans, before I actually went and saw the the oncologist at the hospital. Um, while I was getting a lot of attention from the hospital, in organising all these tests and everything, I uh, I've got to say that I, I'd never felt so alone in my life. Um, it, it was terrible. Um, I had plenty of questions to ask, but there was really no one to, to answer any of the questions. I was seriously lost in a sea of cancer and I felt that there was no one to save me. I mean, how could they give me a diagnosis of neuroendocrinal tumours and leave me to my own devices? I, I still struggle to this day knowing how I got through that period of time. We, we actually met with my oncologist two months after my surgery. He sat down and explained to me what NETS was. He also, we, we, we talked about all different sorts of things and I've got to say that I walked out of there thinking, what, what, what on earth just took place? And you, one thing you do have to do is take someone with you to those sorts of appointments. The, the oncologist, beautiful person, lovely man, he said to me um, when I get out of the hospital to go and Google the Unicorn Foundation, he said that will give you a lot of answers. And I've got to say that I did. And I did ask him, well, what now? And he said to me, Helen, go live your life. Um, what, what a great man, honestly. So I did. I spent days going through the Unicorn Foundation website finding out about people like me. I was just so relieved that there was a specific place for me to, and my illness. And I wasn't alone. I think I was so relieved. Um and while I now realise that everyone's different, uh, journey is different, there is a place and 
there are people who care about me and my diagnosis of NETS. I soon realised on my journey that NETS was not a high-profile disease and was not on the media radar. Unless you had a high-profile cancer, there was no media, there was limited public understanding and no big money for research behind it. I learned that the Unicorn Foundation was a driving force raising money and lobbying the government to, for research and trials. And I have been very vocal since diagnosis in the hope that people will become advocates for their own bodies and demand the, the right answers on medical questions that are not getting answered. And I have been given a few opportunities to speak at a few local events and it's helped me get the word out about NETS and what it is. And it has also helped me come to terms with um, what my actual disease. Most days in my head, I refuse to admit that I'm sick, as most days I'm fine and I just get on with living. Um, however, there are some days when it's just hard to get above the fact that I have cancer, but that's okay, you do get over those days. It's now three years post-operation on November 3 coming up. I am an active member on the Unicorn Foundation Facebook group and I try and give some useful help to um, people who are just going through the diagnosis process and are learning to live with the disease. <laughs> to say this disease is confusing is an understatement and the, the journey is, is so different for every single person being diagnosed. But one thing I do know since being diagnosed with NETS is that Everybody needs to talk about it and we need to get the word out there. So thank you to the Unicorn Foundation, great people, great support and it's just they've just been fabulous in my journey. Thanks, I hope it hasn't been too boring. Bye.